you're still watching ways now every june 6th um is world pest day or sometimes called world pest awareness day the day was created to raise awareness of how pest management helps uh, preserve the quality of life for you and your loved ones ah, one thing i hate more I, mean, I hate most crawling anything crawly like <laughs> i have one jar of uh, you know the the concentrated sniper mm. so most times maybe if i want to travel like for a week or two so i'll just put that put them at different angles in the house you know just to control pests and again with the rains right it's going to even like if you are if you are not um if you do not pay attention to you know controlling pests in your house now to make it even worse Lord. you know it will make it worse i don't like anything that crawls spiders yeah, roaches so my I'm house a pest infestation so we're thinking of fumigating are you don't be thinking uh, it's, it's, it's stressing me out <laughs> and you know the sad thing about i've had to throw there's one time in my house i had to throw away microwave or oh, um gas cooker i, I threw it all away because Roaches had infested, oh, you know, and yes. it's so it's so irritating. They the, just, like they the, just keep you coming know, out. Your toaster, every all those things. Mm. It was so bad. I had a very terrible. No, but that one, the nanny was dirty. You know, rats, everything infested my house. So I had to throw away everything. Started all over again and all of that. Because once you let it, and with roaches, you know, the eggs it just keeps multiplying. Yeah, so that's play. why, you know, this is my space now. I'm so happy. <laughs> I don't see anything. Do you understand? You're so lucky. I'm no. I'm. I'm also very deliberate. If because if you are very deliberate about hygiene, mm. and making sure that you know all those corners and your your doors are properly sealed, you know I had to buy all those doors um, yeah. slip to to seal up so those. Yeah, I sealed up everywhere, so I don't have I don't have roach or anything. I'm really grateful because I don't like those things at all. I don't know. Diola, do you have roach problems? <laughs> oh no, ma. I mean, I'm actually very intentional about, I, I hate anything that crawls. I can't even stand it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could literally almost run mad if I see a roach, you know. So I'm always very particular about um, little things like that. And I discover that um, things as little as um, vinegar, you know, it really helps. Yes. You know, I just, yeah, as simple as that, it just helps. White surfaces. Um ensure that you trash your bean every evening you know yeah. just so that ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't like them at all i'm telling you that's vinegar even um bleach actually so even sometimes on my 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 kitchen stuff is the the, the marble tile i use you know bleach oh. yes and just mm -hmm. wipe up that you know because anything it, it repels so ah yeah yeah Yola, you, you did there. No, my friend. I think uh, yeah, uh, the hygiene part is, is it yeah, for me yeah. because when you leave food exposed and uh, the smell attracts rodents, yeah. it attracts uh, pests generally. Yeah. So hygiene is very, very key when you want to um, deal with uh, pests apart from spraying because sometimes you find out the ones in Nigeria they don't it's like you're spraying perfume on them they're like oh thank you right and they're still all over the place so you just have to make sure that your dust bins are well closed and if there there's uh, food waste there tie it up and take it outside so mm. some of those things can really, really help when you, especially when you also sealed some of the areas, access routes through which they come into the house. Mm, absolutely. Another thing, again, if you have very dirty neighbors, God bless you. <laughs> because Or drainages. Yeah, no, because if you have neighbors that are like dirty, like in a compound, maybe you're not alone in your compound and your neighbors and all of that, you, that way you really must be very... I'm very happy that my neighbors are... Yeah. Neighbors are neighbors. Yeah, you have to be very... Is there anybody that is dirty? <laughs> Every time I come out, I'm like, they carried everyone's. Lama picked up our waist. Why haven't they picked yours? Mm. This hasn't paid. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So that's <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay, ladies, let us quickly run through what we found in the news. Diola, let me come to you first. Okay, um, so my headline news um, is um, Rivers Pastor sentenced 
to death by hanging for killing choir mistress. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this is, um, well, a pastor that uh, murdered um, his choir mistress. And also, you know, there's an additional murder charge relating to the death of the choir mistress friend and the baby. You know, um, so the high court in um, Port Harcourt today um, gave that ruling and um, said that, um, you know, the the prosecutor was was able to prove beyond reasonable doubt and that the confession statement made by Okora for that's the pastor himself, was very indicting. Um, it was believed that um, the deceased women um, had visited the pastor in his residence where he convinced them to join him in a lonely bush where he committed this act on them respectively. Um, I mean, I, there's, there's a whole lot of impulse from the International Federation of Women Lawyers, and um, they were able to ensure that justice was served. Of course, on the part of the pastor, um, his um, own lawyer says that... Um, the case, um, the well, the judgment will be appealed because um, the court misconceived and misinterpreted the law. I mean, for me, when I when I saw this, I I was somewhat sad for the deceased women because I mean, whatever they must have done, regardless of the arguments for and against it, they did it probably from a place of trust. You know, you trust your spiritual leader and then it makes you let down your guard. And then when you see the legal system, you know, show that, um, you know, justice in some way is served, at least to give the family some form of closure. I mean, it's, it's good news because too often, mm. more times than not, you know, we hear that this we hear of cases like this, and it's just another statistic, you know. Mm. We just, it's just gone. It's, it's left for the family to pick up the pieces of whatever happened without any closure, no form of justice, you know, whatever. But, I mean, this is, um, I can't say it gives me joy, but, I mean, and again, I, I was quite surprised that um, the court went for the death penalty. That's not very common, yeah? You know, mm. and it's um, death by legal. No, I think recently the hanging. courts have been granting death by hanging because you remember the yeah. case I took last week of the OAU student that was um, mm. that the hotelier and three of mm. three of his uh, member of staff, all of them they were they were all sentenced to death by hanging. So I think you know uh, we need to really mm. get to that point so that people before yeah. you think of any crime you would you think twice yes, absolutely yes, yes, yes all right so yes, norman yes. let me come to you quickly all right my story is a rather sad one it's about the popular haitian american resident doctor dr nikita motima who unfortunately ended her life in new york um it's, it's such a sad story because this is someone who was an anesthesiologist trainee and uh, she got her bachelor's degree from New York University and had done her training with St. John's uh, University as well. And this was someone who was uh, such an advocate for resident doctors. She throughout her time at Montfort Medical Center. She created a union to demand better work conditions and pay um, uh, pay skills and uh, even mental health situations for healthcare practitioners. She was such an advocate and she continued to push whatever um, that affected uh, resident doctors, just trying to create a better environment, working environment for them. And uh, to suddenly end her life uh, by suicide, it's, it's just, it begs the question about mental health. You know, a lot, I keep saying that a lot of times we see strong people and they look like they have it all figured out. I think more 
important than not is that time where you need to ask to find out how they're doing because sometimes people put up a facade of strength and uh, being able to do it all meanwhile they're struggling inside mm -hmm. and of course we can't emphasize the need to pay attention to mental health it's it's a very very important for Absolutely. even workers, not just medical uh, personnel. In this case, we're talking about uh, practitioners. We already know how intense the environment can I think be they even need to, yeah. They, things that they have to deal with. Yeah. But there are also other work environments. I mean, I think um, uh, employers should be very conscious in the, uh, in the area of mental health to take into cognizance how their workers are dealing with different environmental challenges because this is something that is becoming more often than not it before it used to be a case of oh people who did not have anything tangible doing but now we're seeing professionals we're seeing people who are at the height of their career committing suicide so yeah. it's not just limited to people who are struggling anyone successful or not can be struggling and it's important for us to Absolutely. also bring awareness to the fact that there are resources available to help people deal with mental health uh, situations absolutely um it's a very sad one and um, i think we have some lineup for mental health conversations you know that we're going to um, probably talk about in the course of the, the months to come jennifer your story all right, um, CAN, C-A-N, PFN, congratulatory letters, misplaced Christian groups. So a coalition of Christian youth groups um, on Tuesday described their congratulatory letter extended to President Bola Tsinubu. Now, that's by the Christian Association of Nigeria and Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria as misguided and a mere expression of goodwill and not acceptance of the election that is not credible and couldn't have produced a credible outcome. So they basically sent him a letter, um, expression of goodwill, but then they are also saying that it is not to, um, how, what word will I use now? It's not to say that they are accepting um, the, outcome. That he, yeah, the outcome of the election or they are totally happy with the fact that he's the president, but then it's, you, I mean, you still have to congratulate the, I respect the uh, office. Respect the office. Absolutely. So that's basically the comment section is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> they should go and look for it. But that's All right, Polytechnics um, get 130 million each as intervention fund. Now, the Tertiary Education Trust Fund has approved 130 million for each Polytechnics as zonal intervention in its 2023 intervention line. Now, the Director of Infrastructure of the Funds, Buhari Mikailu, who confirmed the development at the TEF Fund um, NBTE Sensation Workshop that happened uh, um, recently. Um, that's today, actually. It happened today in Abuja. The zonal intervention skill of four rectors and directors of skill in beneficiary polytechnics so that this fund would be geared towards um, reinvigorating skills um, acquisition in polytechnics across the country. He said the intervention was to consolidate the efforts of the National Board of Technical Education in increasing the capacities of polytechnics to dis deliver on their mandates. So I just want to quickly say that a lot of problems that we have in Nigeria, right, if we had fantastic technical institutions, that's the polytechnics, there, there we would be able to find solutions to some of the challenges that we have infrastructure-wise, right? Yeah. Polytechnic is beyond just saying you want to move 130 million. How did they arrive at this amount, mm. right? This intervention amount. We can't keep doing things like that. We need to understand the importance of polytechnics. Some polytechnics in other parts of the world you can't even enter. It has to be the brightest minds that are admitted into those schools. But well, here it is lopsided. Yeah. Do you understand? It's somebody that is not able to go. They, 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 there's still that um, disparity. This, discrimination. Yeah, discrimination between polytechnic graduates and... And it's supposed to be the other way around. So, I mean, before you say you want to do intervention funds, first of all, you need to know the importance of how, you know, how valuable a polytechnic would, would... I mean, how much it would contribute 
you know, to some of the infrastructural challenges and all these challenges that we have in terms of infrastructure or maybe planning or whatever that we have in our country, and then invest in, in those institutions. So let it not be like you're giving handouts, you know, that we truly understand that these people can actually solve some of the problems that we have. I sent a video yesterday, I don't know if you guys saw it, the video of the electric um, um, yes. care care that a, a young boy, um, what is it called, developed. Mm. Now we are complaining about all these uh, issues of fuel and all of that. It is supposed to be in these technical institutions. You understand that innovations are supposed to be coming out from different angles, solutions to the challenges that we are facing. So let's stop all these handouts. When I saw the story, I just felt like, come on, we can't be doing this, you know. In fact, the 130 million, how did you arrive there? Yeah. Do you understand? The needs that the needs that they would require, I'm sure it would be much more than that. Because most of the te <laughs> uh, polytechnics are dilapidated. I mean, we've talked about this before. I can't remember the exact show. I think it was last, early last year or two years ago. We actually talked about how the government needs to upgrade polytechnics and upgrade their certificate because it has gone beyond saying that like now they they, act, they treat them like second like second citizens hmm. you get people who went to polytechnics and then they come out you're telling them they can't get the regular jobs that people with bscs or yeah. are getting and it makes no sense to me because if you actually go to schools like maybe yabatech or Lautech, for example and you see what these students are building and what they are coming up with you'll be marveled and I don't know. I think the government needs to do something about it. It's just a lopsided uh, on, on this We're thing. We're very classist in I'm in telling America. you, the classist <laughs> is a classist something. But on that note, I want to talk lip gloss and powder. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.